So, today we're going to talk about the most researched supplement on the market and one that has been shown to produce the best results. Creatine is a compound that's produced in the body, mainly in the liver. It's then stored in skeletal muscles, ready to be used during periods of high intensity workout. Now, we're going to discuss how our body uses up creatine to produce energy. But in order for me to do that, I need to tell you a bit more about how our body produces energy. We mainly get energy from the nutrients we eat, right? So from carbohydrates or fats. We then use up these nutrients to produce ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and this is the main energy currency in the body. Now, I want you to remember ATP as a compound with three phosphate molecules, okay? And we'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute. Now, fats produce ATP at a slower rate. So fats are a good source of energy during periods of aerobic exercise. This is slower exercise such as walking or brisk jogging, okay? Carbohydrates produce ATP at a faster rate. So carbohydrates are a good source of energy for anaerobic exercise. This is faster exercise such as running or swimming. When ATP is used up for energy, it loses one of its phosphate groups and it's then converted into ADP, adenosine diphosphate. This is a molecule with only two phosphate groups and this is where creatine comes in. Creatine is actually stored in the skeletal muscle as creatine phosphate and here it lends a phosphate group to ADP so it's quickly recycled and converted back to adenosine triphosphate, the main energy currency, ready to be used as energy. This is actually the quickest way our body produces energy during really short bouts of intense exercise such as weightlifting or sprinting. Now, as we mentioned before, creatine is naturally produced in the body. However, we can also find it in some of the foods we eat. It's mainly found in meats and to a very small extent in dairy. And to put things into perspective, the food that has the most amount of creatine is beef. And to get five grams of creatine, which is the normal serving you'd get from most supplement sources, you'd need to eat a whole kg of beef. So you can see where supplementing with creatine can be necessary, especially for those on a vegan diet because as we discussed creatine is only found in meat sources and to some extent in dairy sources so they really won't have any creatine in their diet so for them supplementing with creatine is essential there are different forms of creatine on the market the main form which is the one that has been researched the most been shown to be the most effective and the most safe and also happens to be the cheapest is creatine monohydrate other forms include creatine ethyl ester creatine hydrochloride, buffered creatine, and the list goes on. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with how each one works differently, but they seem to claim different properties, such as being absorbed quicker or needing a smaller dose to have the same effect. However, there's not really any sustained or sufficient evidence to prove any of these claims. So at this stage, you're really better off sticking to the cheapest, safest, and most effective, creatine monohydrate. So we've seen that in theory, creatine works to increase the energy output during periods of high intensity exercise. However, is there any evidence to suggest that creatine helps to increase strength? The main meta-analysis combines 16 different studies looking at the effect of creatine on power and strength. There were 70 participants who took creatine versus 73 who took a placebo, and it measured the difference in strength output at the end of a period of eight weeks. What they found was at the end of the eight weeks, there was around a seven kg increase in bench press and 10 kg increase in squats in those taking creatine compared to the ones taking placebo, concluding that creatine does increase strength. So we know how creatine works. We know that research has shown creatine to be effective uh, and we know which form of creatine to take. The question is, is creatine safe? Most people seem to ask whether creatine is safe for your kidneys. When creatine is used up, it is broken down to creatinine. Creatinine is cleared by the kidneys and excreted in the urine. Now, one of the ways we measure kidney function as doctors is by measuring the creatinine level in the blood. That's because if your kidneys are not working properly, they're not gonna get rid of the creatinine, so the levels in the blood are gonna be higher. Now, you can already see where this is leading to, because if you're taking more creatine, then the levels of creatinine in the blood are going to be higher but that doesn't necessarily mean it's because you have poor functioning kidneys so that's what we call a false positive now luckily there are other tests we use to measure kidney function and what the research showed is that those parameters were not affected when taking creatine 
concluding that creatine is safe for the kidneys and is not harmful. So there you have it, there's a brief explanation as to how our body uses creatine during periods of intense exercise to increase its energy output. We've also discussed how creatine has been shown to be safe, we've discussed how creatine has been shown to be effective and we've discussed the different types of creatine and which one you should be taking. Now if you found this video useful make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, do leave them in the comments below. I will get back to you. Um, if you've got Instagram, check us out. We're at Hamdi Fitness. We regularly post workouts, stretches, and fitness advice. Um, and make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with regular content.